Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Amir and in this video I want to talk to you about some of the subtle signs that you want to look out for to know if you're going to be balding anytime soon or some things that you generally just want to prevent if you have relatives, your dad, your uncle, your grandpa, anyone who has been balding in the future because most likely it will catch up to you at some point. So the best thing that we can do is to take some steps necessary to prevent it altogether or the best case scenario, slow it down and prolong it as long as we can. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So if we go ahead and zoom out a little bit and talk a little bit about the science behind why hair loss occurs, it comes down to two main categories. The first category are the people who have maybe a dietary malfunction, are reacting bad to a drug that they're taking, such as steroids, or three, simply stress. That kind of hair loss is reversible as long as you change up your lifestyle and clean up your diet a little bit and manage your stress, I'm sure you can turn around that. But 95% of people have the other kind of hair loss known as androgenic alopecia. This kind of hair loss is passed down thanks to your dad, thanks to your grandpa. That kind of hair loss is gonna catch up to you at one point or the other. Research actually shows that by the age of 50, 85% of men will experience some form of hair loss. So for some of us, it might not be as bad, but for others, they might lose the front half of their hairline or you know, be bald altogether. So hair loss is caused by DHT. What DHT is, it is a hormone that derives from testosterone. The more testosterone you produce, the more DHT you produce as well. And the more sensitive you are to DHT, the more hair loss you will experience in the future or in the present right now. No need to worry, luckily we are in 2020 where there is different kinds of supplements, solutions, and treatments out there to help reduce DHT, increase blood flow, and help you keep your hair for as long as you possibly can. We'll go ahead and definitely talk about some of those options later in the video, but first let's talk about the three main places where you can look to see if you're gonna be balding anytime soon, or if you are currently already balding, and the easiest way to spot it. So the first and foremost one, as we talked about, are your relatives, your family members. If your dad or your grandpa or your aunt, uncle, whoever it is, has some form of balding history, you should be careful. Even though you're not bald yet, you may want to be careful because it all gradually starts. For some people, they will be able to help push it back to maybe until they're like 35, 40. Good on you. But for people like me, we start at like 18, 19, and some unfortunately even younger at the age of even 14. So you never know where you're going to be in that spectrum. So always just look out for your family members and relatives. And if they do have some form of hair loss, that means that you need to be more careful, even if you're not experiencing hair loss just yet. Now, if you think that you have come to that stage where you are experiencing or will experience some form of hair loss, the easiest way to spot it are two main places. One is your hairline and two is your crown area. These are the areas where you will start to see the beginning of most hair loss. Your hair will rarely fall out like from the top area. It's always just gonna start over here and slowly shrink its way out until you basically have no hair. If your hairline over here, let's say, it starts from over here to over here and it makes a good U shape, that means you're good to go. But as you can see for me right here, there's some areas where it's thinning right here and right here this is a very obvious sign that you know my hairline is kind of receding back usually when you're gonna be receding you'll see something like this which is a general indication that shows that your hairline will be receding in the future if you don't give it any attention if your hairline is not receding yet that is great but the second place where you definitely want to check where it's gonna be the most obvious is your crown it's the worst having hair loss up here because that's the most obvious and when people are just looking at the back of your head that's the first thing that they notice so the simplest way to check that is to pull out your phone, go on selfie mode, and go like this and snap a picture. You'll be able to basically evaluate where exactly in your crown that you're thinning. If you're not, then that's great. You know, you can go ahead and continue doing your thing and continue taking your your hair. But if you are, it's time to start using some active supplements and treatments necessary if you want to go ahead and slow this down or stop it altogether. The third spot that you will find a good amount of hair loss if you're losing hair 
are again in two places. One is where you sleep, aka your pillow sheets, and two is where you shower. So that's why if you think you're losing hair, just have a pillowcase that contrasts the color of your hair. So if you have black hair like mine, I would go ahead and do a white pillowcase. If you have blonde hair, maybe do another contrasting color, whatever, that contrasts your hair so you're able to better spot to see if you're losing hair while you sleep. And just to give you a quick fact, an average person loses 100 hairs a day. So if you're having a little bit of you know hair fall, that's not a big deal. But if you're seeing a lot, if you think it's more than 100, that's something that you should worry about. And the second place where you'll find the most amount of hair loss is in the shower. When you're in the shower and you're washing your hair and getting up all in there, don't just let your hands down like that. Like actually see like what's in your hand. And if you're experiencing hair loss, you may find like clumps of hair just in your palm and you won't even notice in the shower because you know, you're just kind of you know doing your thing. But do take that into consideration. Also look at the bathtub, see if there's any hair on the floor after you're done showering. So these are some simple ways that you can look into to see if you're losing hair. So now let's talk about some of the things that you can do in your early hair loss stages that will help you keep your hair for as long as possible. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the key thing that will cause hair loss is the hormone called DHT. So if we want to go ahead and stop hair loss or slow it down, we need to get to the root cause. Stimulating blood circulation, all that stuff is great for hair growth, but it's not gonna stop further hair loss. So if we go ahead and attack it from two angles, one is the DHT and two, stimulate blood circulation for more hair growth, we're gonna have the most effective results. So there are actually quite a bit of supplements that you can take that will naturally help you slow down DHT and also increase blood circulation in those areas. And for your convenience, I will list and link all of these supplements in the description below. For people experiencing hair loss in the earlier stages, there are mainly five supplements that I would recommend that will not only help block DHT, but also increase blood flow to your scalp. The first and foremost is called saw palmetto. Saw palmetto is a great DHT blocker and it has and there's tons of research and evidence that shows that it has helped slow down hair loss from the root and also help block DHT as it claims. It's a natural supplement, there's really no major side effects, so you can't be losing using saw palmetto. The second supplement that you should most definitely incorporate is biotin. Biotin is also a great source of vitamin that not only helps your hair but also your skin and your nails. But what it does to your hair follicles from the root is that it makes it more elastic, giving your hair follicles enough breathing room to open up, making it easier for your hair to grow better and faster and stronger. The third is pumpkin seed oil. Pumpkin seed oil has rare amino acids which are proven to help block DHT. Number four, rosemary oil. Studies show that rosemary oil is actually very similar to minoxidil. It helps increase blood flow to the scalp and it's like a topical solution just like minoxidil. You put it on your hair, you leave it in for a little bit and you wash it off. So if you don't want to use minoxidil or if you want to use minoxidil alongside with all these other supplements, I think that will be very, very beneficial for you. And lastly, vitamin B12 and B6. Vitamin B, again, it is also found in biotin. It helps nourish the scalp, increase blood flow to the scalp, and it pretty much contains the same properties as biotin. It's just another like cherry on top to help promote healthier and thicker hair. So these are some of the natural things that you can do. However, if your hair loss has progressed beyond that and progress a little further where you can see visible bald, then I would recommend with going with minoxidil. Minoxidil is a great solution for those experiencing hair loss and if you catch it in the earlier stages, you will have great results. So again guys, it's all about taking action early on and not letting this thing further delay because prevention is always, always better than recovery. And if you want better results, you can always combine minoxidil with these other supplements such as biotin, saw palmetto, your vitamin B12, vitamin B6, rosemary oil to further enhance your results. But if you aren't comfortable uh, with minoxidil or you are someone who's more prone to side effects, I'll definitely say go ahead and consult a dermatologist before going on the set. I do know that there are some people who have, you know, explain weight gain, heartburns, chest pains, all that stuff. So I would hate for you guys to experience some of these things uh, with minoxidil. For me personally, I've never had an issue with it, but for some people, I can see that being an issue. And if you do happen to be one of those people, don't lose hope because there are some natural solutions still out there for you that will actively help you grow hair without taking any chemicals or any of that bad stuff. And, and that right now in the market is laser hair growth therapy. It does pretty much the same thing as minoxidil, but without actually having you do any of the chemical stuff. If you're interested in checking out minoxidil or laser hair growth therapy, I'll go ahead and link all of those things in the description below so you can go ahead and pick your poison. <sighs> okay, now let's take a step back. I think I, got, I told you pretty much everything you need to know on how to spot hair loss and how to deal with it. 
but there's one big thing that I think most people will do after watching this video. I can predict that after watching this video, what you will do is you'll click, look at other videos on the side over here, you'll click on them, or you'll get a notification on your phone and you'll get distracted and you'll kind of forget. And don't be this person. If you're experiencing some form of hair loss, the worst thing that you can do is do absolutely nothing. Again, I told you, I have friends, I have people that I know who I told about their hair loss issues and everything, and I gave them exact remedies and solutions, but they chose not to take any action, and now they're on the verge of being bald. And had I done the same thing, I would have lost all my hair now too. So again, please take some form of action, whether it may just be oiling your hair every single day or uh, changing up your diet, bettering the way you treat your hair, or if you're on the more serious side, just starting out with monoxyl or whatever hair growth solution is out there. Guys, again, if your hair at the end of the day is important to you, if your hair at the end of the day is something that matters that will affect your confidence and your ability and how you present yourself and how you see yourself, I think it's something that you should worth investing into. Because genetics are a bitch, but luckily, as I said, we are in 2020. We are in a generation where we have a solution for pretty much anything. Luckily, we're not in a time of our grandparents or any of our ancestors where if you're bald, you had no other option. You just kind of have to live with it. We do have things right now that will help us combat this and slow it down for as long as we possibly can. So take advantage of it, guys. And at the end of the day, if it's something that matters to you, it's something that you should definitely most actively work on. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful and enjoyed it and you found some new information about hair loss that you, you didn't know before. And if you guys did, please be sure to go ahead and drop a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below how old were you when you started losing hair. If you have any questions about any hair related stuff or confidence or any of that kind of jazz, drop that shit in the comment section below. If you guys did enjoy this video, as I said, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that bell so you don't miss any future videos. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.